Right now, there are a number of reports going around claiming that Bentley says its new electric sports car will destroy the Tesla Roadster. Are these claims to be believed? Are they even possible? Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of the mass behind why they might or might not actually be possible. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for subscribing. Great to have so many new subscribers on the channel. Fantastic to hit 70,000 subscribers this year. It was something that um, I had set as a goal and you guys helped me achieve it. So I just want to say a big thank you to all of you. Thanks for making this last 12 months an amazing year for me and for the guys here that helped me that work on this channel together with me. In a recent interview in Europe, Bentley CEO Adrian Hallmark said, well, he said some kind of crazy things if these reports are to be believed. And these crazy things apply to Bentley's new electric supercar, which will be their first electric vehicle. He described the brutality of acceleration in the upcoming EV as being, well, brutal, but he said that that won't be its main selling point. It will instead be effortless overtaking from torque on demand. The price, well, it's going to be a lot of money. And for those of you who don't know, Bentley is a very old, in fact, a hundred year old automotive brand celebrated globally for its incredible craftsmanship and expertise, its luxury, the perception of quality, the perception of wealth. However, the Volkswagen Group purchased the company in the late 90s, modernizing its facilities to increase production and enabling them to then start using parts from their other cars like the Volkswagen Golf in the Bentley. No, just kidding. They don't really use parts from the Volkswagen Golf, but they do actually use parts from Audi vehicles in Bentleys. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, Bentley does still make their cars bespoke. There are lots of things in them that are just made by hand. Incredible craftsmanship. But some parts of them are part of the, you know, the Volkswagen Group automotive parts bin. So, I mean, when you buy Bentley, are you really buying a Bentley? Or are you buying... A Volkswagen Group automobile. Well, some people would say one, some people would say the other. Personally, I've got to admit, I used to love Bentley, but they've done jack all, as in nothing when it comes to electrifying their cars. So frankly, I just lost interest in that brand, period. I actually think a lot of people have. Why do I say that? You know what? All the mainstream automotive websites here in Australia, I know some of yours in America as well, and of course, a couple in the UK. I read a few from the UK, a few from China, some from America, some from Australia. And I'm talking mainstream. I'm not talking EV websites. These mainstream websites, what have they been doing? Clickbait on clickbait on clickbait. They're getting more clickbaity by the week. Why are they doing that? I'll tell you why. I think why. People are getting less and less interested in learning about new internal combustion engine vehicles. More than half of their articles are in about internal combustion engine vehicles. Legacy Auto, right? Still less than 5% of Legacy Auto sales yearly are electric. Therefore, what? The primary news these sites are talking about are, well, about internal combustion engine products. And I think most people just don't really care anymore. Why? Let's say you, you like looking about phones, right? And you went to a phone website back in 2017, and they're mostly talking about BlackBerry phones and Nokia 3310s. You'd be like, ah, oh, this is boring. That's what happens to me. I wake up in the morning and I think, oh, I'll check out drive.com.au. I'll check out car expert. I'll check out this website. I'll check out auto car. I'll check out whatever it is, right? And you know what? I'm freaking bored. I'm just bored. I'm like, ah, oh, your same old engine, same old specs. It's another diesel engine. It's got the same power that the car had 10 years ago. Nothing's changed. Boring, boring, boring. So what do they do? They clickbait the hell out of you. They say, Tesla this. Tesla blew up the world. The universe will explode because Elon Musk said something. Clickbait, clickbait, clickbait. And you know what? I'm bored of it. I'm bored of it. And you know what's happening? People are going to these electric car websites now, like the electric, like Inside EVs, like Clean Technica, like Tesla Rati, like CNET Post, like Car News China. All of these sites, they're going there instead to get their news because that's the only place you can find real news about new technology, right? Unless you want to be clickbaited 
by these mainstream automated websites. So as a result, I don't really know what's been going on in the world of Bentley because internal combustion engine vehicles bore me. So that's what Bentley's been doing. By the way, I do know a little bit about the brand. Bentley actually race cars here in Australia in a 24 hour automotive race, right? And for some reason, I, I like following Bentleys in that race. But I've always known their cars are big, heavy, luxurious. Even their race cars are extremely heavy. They're all about 2,300 plus kilos. That's heavy for a sports car, right? I know they're a luxury car. They're not really that big. They're extremely heavy. So can Bentley actually deliver what they say they will, which is a performance car that will do zero to 60 miles an hour in 1.5 seconds? right? Is that possible? Well, first of all, let's have a look at what Bentley is actually doing. Contrary to the Volkswagen Group, which has made conscious efforts in recent years to embrace electrification, Bentley has not been a huge part of the all-electric transition overseas despite a promise to go all EV within the next 10 years. Bentley currently only offers plug-in hybrids, including the Bentayga, one of the ugliest SUVs on the planet, to be fair, which will be joined by the Flying Spur this year. To kick off 2022, Bentley announced its Beyond 100 electrification strategy, vowing a gain to go all electric by 2030 with the help of five new electric cars. One will be arriving each year beginning in 2025. In other words, Bentley are not going to make any EVs until 2025. That's still three years away. I mean, will this dinosaur company even exist in 2025? I guess they probably will because, you know, Volkswagen will keep them alive. But anyway, the strategy includes 2.5 billion pounds or 3.4 billion US dollars invested into Bentley's manufacturing facility, revamping the entire space to support a dream factory for EV production. I mean, normally dreams are things you dream of in the future. So they're going to be dreaming of the past by the time they're actually making EVs there. But anyway, as we await the first Bentley EV in 2025, the electric says the company CEO has shared some specs we can expect to see. Maybe. I wouldn't hold your breath because I don't think it's possible. Despite not having a single electric vehicle on the market at all, period, right now, full stop, Bentley is planning to do the impossible. Make a luxury, probably heavy, electric supercar, which will apparently have only 1,400 horsepower. Now, I know 1,400 horsepower is quite a bit, but to be fair, the Model S has more than 1,200 based on dyno tests. So it's only going to have 200 horsepower more than the Model S, right? But they say it'll accelerate, like I said before, to 60 miles an hour or 97 kilometers an hour in 1.5 seconds. If that's true, Bentley would not only destroy the Tesla Model S Plaid and the Lucid Air Dream Edition, but it would also destroy the future Tesla Roadster, at least the non-SpaceX version anyway. So the thing is, is it possible for this vehicle to have only 200 horsepower more than Tesla's Model S, yet weigh a similar amount and do zero to 60 miles an hour in 1.5 seconds? Well, based on my back of the napkin calculations, no, it's not even remotely possible this car will be able to do that speed. In fact, many people claim that Tesla can't achieve its quoted advertised 1.8 seconds, zero to 60 miles an hour in its Tesla Roadster, which is quoted to have way more power than this and be considerably lighter, most likely, based on what? Based on the fact that Bentley only makes extremely heavy vehicles. Now, even if Bentley don't make this vehicle, they contract it out to someone else and it's lighter. 1,400 horsepower is still not enough to send this car from zero to 60 miles an hour in 1.5 seconds. It would need enormous slick racetrack tires to have any chance of doing that, right? It's just not physically possible to do that kind of speed. That's like the kind of speed you only see from vehicles which have pure race slicks on them and are severely compromised in a number of ways. It just isn't mathematically possible. I think the CEO is getting a little excited here or somebody has misquoted these numbers. Something funny is going on. Now, I'm sure those of you watching this channel who are engineers would know. You would know what I'm saying is right, right? I've been reading about these zero to 60 mile an hour times. I've been reading all these data, watching the YouTube videos, watching these races. I've been doing this for, for decades. And frankly, it is impossible to achieve this performance with this car. 
unless it comes standard with enormous racing slicks, massive racing slicks, and that power is maybe understated by, say, 300 horsepower, and unless you have absolutely perfect, 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 perfect track conditions where the track's been prepped, been made sticky, 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 perfect temperatures, these kinds of times, sorry, I just don't think they're going to be possible from Tesla or from anyone else, unless it's got rockets and it can actually withstand the needs of traction, right? When you are traction limited, that's when tire patch, tire contact makes it all the difference in the world. And I really don't think this car is going to come with tires that are, say, 700 millimeters wide or something ridiculous like that. It's going to have reasonable street legal tires on it. Otherwise, it's just going to be a race car and it's not going to be a car you can drive on the road. However, if it did have this kind of speed, I honestly think you would potentially uh, pass out or get whiplash or throw up. This would be purely nauseating speed that would feel horrendous. Kind of like being on an amusement park ride where it's so crazy that you just throw up straight away afterwards. Now, the company claims that they'll have two different models. One will do this performance in 1.5 seconds. The other model will do it in 2.7 seconds. So, you know, if you think that you can't handle that kind of speed, you can just get the one that can do it in 2.7 seconds. Now, like I said, I don't believe this is mathematically possible without rocket thrusters or something that defies the limits of traction. Traction here is the key. So what about design? What about price? Well, the company hasn't shared any information about price, but they did say its design would build off the automaker's current lineup of the Continental GT Coupe. So it sounds like it'll look a bit like a Continental GT, which I've got to say is one of the nicest looking vehicles you can buy. They also said they're going to have an electric version of the Bentayga and an electric version of the Flying Spur. Personally, I would love a Bentley Bentayga EV if it didn't look like a dog's breakfast. Doesn't look good. Sorry, Bentley. I mean, Continental GT, beautiful. Bentayga, ugly. So the company says the new electric supercar will be built on the premium platform electric, which is the PPE, developed by Porsche and Audi sibling divisions within the Volkswagen group. The PPE will immediately offer Bentley the battery technology, drive units, and body systems, along with autonomous and connected car capabilities. We don't have official pricing for a 2025 theoretical, um, to be honest, fantasy electric supercar. But its CEO did share one variation will cost over 250,000 euros, which is about 262,000 US dollars. Now, if it can do that speed, if it is possible and I'm wrong, and it can do that speed, well, that would make it probably the greatest performance car in the history of mankind. 262,000 US dollars for a car that can do zero to 60 miles an hour in 1.5 seconds. That, my friends, is utterly ludicrous, pun intended. Interestingly, the CEO said the high price is not due to the cost of batteries. This is what he said. The 12 cylinder engine is 10 times the price of the average premium car engine. The average battery costs less money than our 12 cylinder engine. I cannot wait for batteries. They are cheap in relative terms to what we make today. That's pretty cool. Now, personally, I think that um, Bentley CEO is full of vaporware. I know people love to use this word when they're talking about Tesla, even though it's ridiculous because Tesla does make vehicles and they sell a lot of them. But let's be honest, Bentley haven't produced an EV, don't plan on producing one till 2025. The one they say they're going to produce has... Uh, Performance statistics that just don't add up. I mean, considering this car is going to be heavy, 1,400 horsepower is nowhere near enough to do 1.5 seconds from 0 to 60. And in fact, I don't think it's any possible for any car to do that unless it has, like I said, race, track, slick tires that are enormous and some serious, serious hardware to make it go that speed, plus a prepped surface track. I think it's pure fantasy what this CEO is going on about. I really don't think they had the technology now. If they did, why wait three years to produce it? I mean, people don't want... Look at Porsche buyers, right? Porsche buyers are starting to demand electric cars. Uh, they're starting to go, yeah, no internal combustion engine vehicles. They are dinosaurs. They are the past. Bentley, if you have a car that can do these speeds, surely you would be waiting three years to bring it to market. 
I don't think this thing is real. Sorry, my friends. But who knows? I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. I would be stoked to be wrong because this would be awesome. This would be a serious freaking smackdown to internal combustion engine vehicles. I mean, frankly, this kind of performance this vehicle would have, if it is the price he's saying, 262000 US dollars. For a vehicle that can go this fast, well, I mean, imagine lining this thing up, right? Imagine car wow, line this thing up against every other supercar in the world, right? You could line this thing up against anything. You could line this thing up against a Koenigsegg. You could line it up against a Bugatti, a Bugatti Chiron, a Bugatti Supersport Chiron, whatever the heck special edition model costs 14 million ridiculous dollars. You know, any supercar, line that up and it will crucify them. Internal combustion engines are dead. They're slow, they're noisy, they stink, and frankly, they're just finished. But will this Bentley supercar be the end of internal combustion engines? No. 2025, that's three years away. We're gonna see some amazing vehicles come to market by 2025. This, in my view, won't be one of them. Will it come out? Yes. Will it have these specs? Absolutely not. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.